Since it seems I forgot to do a proper intro, I'll just do it. I got a new bike! No problem at these speeds. Now get this. This is a 2005 motorcycle that still has a special marking for 55 miles an hour on the speedometer. That went out in the 80s, but the KLR is fundamentally unchanged from 1987 through 2007. They built the same frickin' bike for 20 years. And even then, the second generation KLR, it added some more modern looking bodywork and all that. But under the skin, it was mostly the same bike. They made a few mechanical tweaks, but not many. This is a 650cc single cylinder. Its advantage is torque, though. And, you know, no problem maintaining, you know, 55, 60, whatever. Well, yeah, it does. State highway is just fine. Wouldn't want to really take it on the interstate, but road like this, no problem. But that is not what it's best at. Like really shines when you get off the beaten path and on to the other beaten path, the literal beaten path. There's a funny thing in New Hampshire they call Class 6 roads. Those are former roads that have been abandoned by the state and the town. They're no longer maintained. But they're still on the books as legal roadways. And this is one of them. This is actually a legal public road in the state of New Hampshire. Therefore, as a road legal motorcycle, I can ride it. And I don't even need the special off-highway recreational vehicle registration that true dirt bikes and ATVs that are not road legal need. There are a lot of roads like this, as well as traditional gravel dirt roads around this area, which is much the reason why I wanted a KLR or similar in the first place. Now, before you guys go criticizing my technique, I know. I really need to be standing up more. And I do intend to learn to do that. That's the right way to be riding in conditions like this. But I'm overcoming almost 20 years of training in road riding where I've always sat down. You can teach an old dog new tricks, but it's going to take a little work. So just bear with me on that. Woohoo! slippage there, but we recovered all right. Let's see. Let's get, make sure I got first gear now and keep going. Of course, I have geared up for the occasion. I'm still wearing my jacket, of course, the mesh one, because it breathes well. I've got some armored pants beyond just the jeans. The armored jeans, I should clarify. And I am wearing full motocross boots. It was bad enough when I was off my feet for two weeks a few winters back with an avulsion fracture in one of my ankles. Drove me crazy, and I drove everybody around me crazy, for which I'm still profoundly sorry. Anyway, point being, I don't want to risk breaking the ankles, so I've got real motocross boots for when I'm out playing in the dirt. Really hard to believe that this is a public road, huh? But New Hampshire for you. Live free or die. Even riding, you know, decently maintained gravel roads on my PC-800, I got a little scared of that because, you know, again, I don't really have any experience in the dirt other than the 
last couple of weeks since I got this bike. And if I drop that bike in the dirt, A, it's more likely because, well, it doesn't have tires designed for dirt at all. And B, there's a pretty good chance that I was going to break some of the plastic body panels on it if I did drop it. And those things are made of unobtainium. They really can't be replaced very easily or affordably because it's kind of a rare bike. See, I know standing works better, but just haven't quite gotten myself comfortable doing it yet. Obviously this part's paved, but you can tell from the artwork, yeah, there isn't really traffic on this section at all. Here's the main road. Road not maintained by town beyond this point. No through traffic. Sounds like fun to me. Ease her down a little bit. This is pretty loose. A lot more loose than the last surface I was on. First thing I've learned about dirt riding is you got to get comfortable with the bike kind of doing its own thing beneath you. It's going to slide the front wheel, the back wheel. They're each going to kind of do their own thing to a certain extent. And to a certain extent, you just got to let them trying to force the tires to go exactly where you want them to be. It's just a recipe for disaster. Second gear is usually a good gear for this sort of thing. Get around these puddles. Another thing I've had to learn is once you're off the pavement, favor the back brake. It's the opposite of what they teach you for the road, but back brake's a lot safer. And if you happen to Lock it up. Doesn't screw you up so much. You can and should still use the front brake some, but nice and easy. You do not want that slipping out on you. And being a 2005 motorcycle designed in the 1980s, there's no anti-lock brakes. All right, what line do I want here? I'll take the high road here. A lot of this, too, is just picking out your line. It's kind of like racing, but not in that I'm not going for speed. I'm going for whatever line is going to give me the best path, and especially the best traction. And I lost my line a little bit right there. Not where I wanted to go, but I'll deal with it. I was saying about letting the bike sort of do its own thing. All right, stay up here, across here. The suspension will take it. This bike came with a cogent dynamic suspension thanks to the previous owner, so uh, I really made out on this. Uh, now we're getting down into some driveways and houses, so the road's opening up a little bit again. We're through the worst of it. Not that I'd consider that part back there bad by any means. That was kind of fun. A few months back, I had the opportunity to meet racing legend Ricky Carmichael. Yeah, that one. And I asked his advice on how an uh, out-of-shape, middle-aged guy, like, oh, I don't know, a friend of mine, let's put it that way, might get started in dirt riding. And he had two major pieces of advice for me. The first was to go to a dealer and get a bike outfitted for you, one that is going to match your body proportions perfectly. I've sat on a few different bikes. I will admit not going to a dealer, but I wasn't going to buy a new bike and then throw it down a trail, unless it was a cheap Chinese dual sport or something. But I did that, and, you know, like I say, I tried my friend's KLR, and that fit me better than anything, so... That's what I ended up getting. And the second thing he told me was don't ride faster than your limits. 
Now, it may seem a little counterintuitive having a multi-time racing champion tell me not to go too fast. But that's actually really good advice. What he was really saying was that I should ride within my own limits. It's okay to explore those limits a bit for sure, but don't get cocky. Don't exceed those limits or you're going to crash. Stalled it. Uh, in gear helps. These ruts make it interesting, but get through them. Oof. That was a rock off my skid plate. Fortunately, got a skid plate. Like I said, this bike came already very well set up. I don't even remember what all it's got, but I saved the list from the Craigslist ad. I'll read it off to you here. You got all that? I hope so. There's going to be a short quiz later, which I will certainly fail. It's gotten a lot easier since it hasn't rained in a few days and the puddles have dried up some. Why, yes, they were bigger before. But you can just sort of pick your line through. No big deal. Yeah, I just sort of ease her over to the left. Line, a little sand, so I'm kind of shimmying all over the place right now. I just got to let the bike do its thing. I'm not good enough to ride up that. And up on the ridge. Ease back a little, like shimmying a little too much for me. Get it over here. Nice. Gigantic puddle here still, and over there down the middle like other people have done. And take the wide line out so I don't have to turn so hard. There we go. And yes, I talk to myself like that whether the camera's running or not. You're just getting a free sample of it. The best part about all this is this is all within a few miles of where I live. I don't have to go and ride hours and hours to go exploring. The other thing, too, is this is a bit more of a workout than just sitting there on the bike letting it go down the road at 50 miles an hour. i got to work a bit to do this, and that's good. That would get me into a little better shape than I am. Oh, that was close. And back on tarmac. So, that's my KLR and why I have it. This isn't exactly a 3Rs video that's going around the KLR Delusionals group. Cool bunch of people and some YouTubers who also ride KLRs. But, uh, well, I did it my way. It's kind of, you know, how I live my life. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Whether you did or not, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this bike in the future because I am loving this on-road, off-road thing.